Hi there, welcome to the Visual ModFlow Flex video training series. My name is Brandon McNeil and I'm the lead software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll discuss the fifth step in the conceptual modeling workflow using Visual ModFlow Flex. After creating the structural zones comprising your conceptual model, the next step in the modeling workflow is the Define Properties step, which is shown here. At this stage you'll use structural zones to define the location of the model property zones, and each property zone will be assigned appropriate property attributes such as conductivity, storage, and initial head values. Property zone geometry can be defined using one or more existing structural zones. As such, property zones can only be generated after model horizons have been defined in the conceptual model. Horizons and structural zones are both defined in the previous, mod f uh, previous workflow step defining the model structure. On the Define Property Zone workflow window, first select the method that will be used to create the new property zones. There are two methods of converting structural zones to property zones. The first method is to simply use the available structural zones, and with this method there will be a direct correlation between the available structural zone and the property zone volumes. The second method is to use a polygon data object. In this case, a structural zone is selected to define the vertical extent of the new property zone, and an available polygon data object can be used to define the horizontal extent of the property zone. Both methods will be illustrated here. We'll simply use structural zones 1 and 2 to define the extent of our first property zone. Click the Use Structural Zones button to begin this process. This will activate the table on the right, which allows you to load in one or more structural zones, uh, which will become our property zone. When this table becomes active, you can use the toolbar buttons above to add or remove rows from this table. Select the required structural zones from the Model Explorer and load them in using the blue arrow buttons. When the geometric extent of the property zone has been defined, you must then specify property values. By default, Visual ModFlow Flex automatically assigns the default property parameter values specified in the Define Modeling Objective step. However, in most situations, the flow properties will not be uniform throughout the entire model domain, and it will, will be necessary to assign different property values to different areas of the conceptual model. First, ensure that the correct property group has been selected from the drop-down menu. While different property groups, such as conductivity and storage properties, will often be based on the same structural elements, it is necessary to define these separately. This means that you can't have one property zone defining both conductivity and storage values. The property zones for these two different property groups would have to be defined independently. Once the correct property group is selected, you can then choose a method for assigning the property values. Visual ModFlow Flex supports various methods for assigning values to hydrogeologic parameters. The methods used for defining attribute can be defined on the parameter level, allowing you to use different methods for different parameters. The supported methods include using a constant value, using 3D gridded data, or using a surface data object. In this example, we'll use a surface data object to define our conductivity values. When you've selected Use Surface under the Method column, you'll then be able to load ob data objects into the Object column. Simply select the required data object from the data tree and load it in using the familiar blue arrow buttons. When the property zone values have been defined, you must then click the Save button under the property zones table to save the values that you've entered. When you do that, you should see a new property zone in, uh, added to the Model Explorer under the Properties node. We'll create a new property zone based on the second method of using a polygon. Click the Use Polygon Data Object button to begin this process, and you should immediately see a new property zone added to the Property Zones table. When using a polygon data object, you'll also noti notice that the frame to the right will be updated, allowing you to use a polygon data object to define the horizontal extent of the new pr uh, property zone, and to use a structural zone to define the vertical extent of the new property zone. Once again, simply select the required data objects from the Model Explorer or the Data Tree, and load them in uh, using the blue arrow buttons. In this case, the selected polygon data object is actually made up of two distinct areas, which will be listed in the Polygons table on the right-hand side, and they'll also be displayed in the preview window below. 
This allows me to define different property values for the two distinct areas. For this example, I'll be assigning property values in both polygons as constant values, although it would be possible to, to define them both using 3D gridded data or a surface data object. It would also be possible to define these two areas as distinct property zones if a polygon shapefile was available for each of these areas independently. Once again, when the desired property values have been assigned, click the Save button under the Property Zones table to actually save the changes, and once again you should see a new property zone added into the Model Explorer. And once your property zones are saved, uh, you'll be able to open them up in a 2D or 3D viewer to review uh, the locations of your property zones. And please remember that if no property values are assigned to any particular area of the model or for a particular property group, such as uh, the storage properties in this case, then Visual ModFlow Flex will automatically assign the default property parameter values which were listed in the Define Modeling Objectives workflow step, which is shown right here. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual ModFlow Flex training videos. The next video in the series will discuss the next step in the conceptual modeling workflow, which is the Define Boundary Conditions step. In the conceptual modeling workflow, all model elements are grid independent, and so boundary conditions will be assigned using data obje objects such as points, polylines, polygons, etc. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the Visual ModFlow Flex support page on our website. A link has been provided in the video description.